All right, if you guys have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 10. We're going to be in verse 46 through 52. Uh, I'll give you a second to turn there. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 46. Verse 46 says this. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, everybody say Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. All right, stop right there. Uh, I want to look at something very interesting that we see in this first verse. Uh, over the course of history, people who were blind, people who were lame, who were beggars, they were not known by their name. Rather, they were known by their title of, of being blind, of being a beggar, of being a lame person. But this is interesting that Bartimaeus was called by his name. And he's referred to by, as son of Timaeus, which leads to this thought. Maybe he was sp supposed to be somebody important. Maybe he was supposed to be somebody uh, big. And maybe his parents, as he was uh, in the womb, had all these big plans and thought that he was going to become something. But then he was born and he was blind. And in that time, that meant that he was damaged goods. Uh, he, he was never what people had intended for him to be. He was a disappointment. And maybe that's where you find yourself today. You feel like you're damaged goods, that you're a disappointment to your parents, to your friends, to yourself. Um, and you, you find yourself struggling with what is my value? So you begin to look for your value in other areas. You look for it in your schoolwork, uh, in sports, in your possessions, in your money. Maybe it's uh, getting a new phone, having the newest shoes. If, and you think, if I can just have these things, I will have value. But what you will find is that the only value you find is, is what God says about you in his word. And value is a very important part of this story. Continue reading in verse 47. It says, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus Son of David, have mercy on me. Stop right there. If you're taking notes, if you have your Bible, I want you to circle this word. I want you to write this word down. It's the word heard. Everybody write that down, the word heard, H-E-A-R-D. Why is this word important? Understand this, that we, we know that Bartimaeus, he was blind, which means he can't see. He can't see. But he could hear. Sometimes we focus on all the don'ts. Uh, I don't have this, I don't do this, I don't, I wish, someday. But I want to ask you this tonight, what do you have? Don't just focus on what you don't have, focus on what do you have. You see, Bartimaeus, he couldn't see, his vision was gone, but he could hear. And he used what he had, and he acted on it. Right now, I know that some of you guys, you're at home and you're struggling. You're struggling uh, relationally because you can't be with anybody. You're struggling spiritually, and you sit there, and you, and you can blame it on all sorts of things. Well, I can't be with my friends right now. I can't go to school. I can't go to work. I can't be at youth, so my relationship with God's just going to struggle. My relationship with my friends is just going to struggle, but I want to ask you this. Don't just focus on what you don't have. What do you have? You have your Bible, and that, the Bible's got some good stuff in there. You can pray. Think about that. Just think about the, the fact that we can talk to God and we can hear from God. That's powerful to know that, that I have the word of God and that I can talk with God. And we have technology. Technology is such a blessing to have right now that right when this service gets over, you can hop on Zoom and you can join a small group. Uh, you can FaceTime your leader. You can FaceTime a friend. You, you can be involved with people. And you have gifts. In Romans chapter 12, we see it says this, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. What Paul is saying here is you have gifts. You have dues. I do have. I do have. I don't, you don't need to worry about the don'ts. That's the beautiful part of being a part of a team is that it doesn't just matter what I don't have because someone else might have what I don't have. I'm going to put, put in what I do have and have someone else put in what they do have and we're going to have the best thing possible. Hear me. I understand that, that times right now, they're different, but that doesn't change the fact that God has given you gifts for such a time as this. Gifts that can be used for others and gifts that can be used for yourself. Continue reading in verse 48. It says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Isn't it, isn't it true that whenever we feel like we're taking a step in the right direction, we, we start to feel better about our situation, that that's when the haters come out, right? Some people, they just wake up every morning and they drink their haterade. You know what I'm talking about? They, they take a drink of some haterade. They just, they wake up and they're ready to put you down. And, they, and they, they're going to tell you all the reasons why you can't. They're going to remind you of all the don'ts. 
And that's what's happening in this story. Understanding, understand this, that, that Jesus, he was in transit. Jesus was going somewhere in this time. This wasn't uh, a time where he was just looking around and he was looking for someone like, oh, who can I do a miracle for in this moment? He was moving to Jerusalem. And Bartimaeus, he saw this and he seized the opportunity. There's opportunities that are going to come to you. And some of them have already passed you by. And it's time that, that we stop worrying about, well, I don't have this. I, I can't do this right now. And it's time that we seize the moment before it's gone. There's a moment that's coming for you to seize this week. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's tonight. Maybe it's right now that God's going to send a moment to you. And you seize that opportunity. You use what you do have and not just focus on what you don't have and take, take hold of that opportunity. Don't worry if, if you've missed an opportunity. Some of you might be struggling and thinking, man, that opportunity passed me last week. Or man, I, I wanted to tell someone about Jesus at school, but now I can't go to school. There's going to be more opportunities to come. There's, the, there's this phrase, when's the best time to plant a tree? Ten years ago. When's the next best time to plant a tree? Right now. You, you, might, have not, you might have missed an opportunity that happened, and it would have been great to take hold of that opportunity then, but seize the moment right now. Don't miss another opportunity. Continue reading, jumping into verse 49. It says, Jesus stopped and said to him, and called him. Uh, so they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. I love this part of the story because the same people that were telling Bartimaeus, hey, stop talking. Hey, hey, shut up are the people that then bring him to Jesus. I love in this story uh, that, that you don't have to see to be seen by Jesus. There's so many times where maybe you're feeling like, man, I, I can't see Jesus. Just because you can't see doesn't mean Jesus doesn't see you. Jesus sees where you're at right now. He sees your struggles. He sees your wins. And he's, he wants every single part of you. But in this story, Bartimaeus, he can't see, but he used what he had and he heard. Oh, this is Jesus going by. I've heard people talk about Jesus. I've heard about him. I heard what he can do for people. I heard what he can do for people just like me. And he starts yelling, which if you don't know, this was not allowed at this time. If you were a beggar, you could not yell. You just had to sit there and look pretty as you could and beg for money. But he went against the culture. Man, sometimes going after Jesus means going against culture. And it's uncomfortable. And people are going to tell you, stop doing that. Stop doing that. But this man, he went against culture. He said, I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if I'm going to lose my rights to beg because I know that Jesus is there and I know what he can do for me. And Jesus calls him. He says, get up. And this man throws off his cloak. That time the cloak, what that meant was that meant that this person was certified by the government that this person can beg for money. So this was the only way that Bartimaeus could make money. And he says, Jesus is here. Everything's changing. He throws his cloak off and he says, I'm going straight for Jesus. The moment that he encountered Jesus, everything changed and he knew he would never have to look back. Continue reading. Verse 51 says, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus along the road. I want you to think about this question for a moment. What if Jesus asked you this? What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What would you say to that question? Can you imagine just being there in that moment and this blind guy, he's yelling and, and he's going crazy and people are telling him to, to be quiet and Jesus says, get up and, and he, he comes to him and Jesus heals him. And then you see this man follow Jesus. I believe for some of us, that's what's gonna happen tonight, sitting at home, in your bedroom, in your living room. You've been blind, not physically, but spiritually. You, you, you haven't been able to see Jesus. And Jesus is going to tell you, get up, and he's going to have you come to him, and there's going to be a miracle that happens if you seize this moment. You've missed opportunities before. You've missed times that you've sat in this very room, sat in one of the empty chairs out there, and you've missed the time to respond to Jesus. But right now, in your bedroom, right now, in your living room, wherever you're watching, you can seize this moment, and you can walk in what Jesus is calling you to do. And I believe God has something new for you right now. And I think that God, he wants to remind you of the value that you have. Remember at the beginning, we talked about how value was so important in this story. And this man, he, he, he didn't lose his value. He, he might have had people look down upon him, but he kept his name. And, and Jesus, he gives him more value. But where do things get their value? I want to explain it like this. Take this, this bottle of water. How much is this bottle of water worth? What would one of you guys give me for this bottle of water? One dollar. We got two. We got three dollars. Right? If you go, if the amusement parks or sports stadiums open anytime soon, you're paying like $11 for this bottle of water, right? 
But what would you give me if, if you were dehydrated? What would you give me for this bottle of water if you were dehydrated? A lot more than a dollar or two? What if the, the person you love the most was dehydrated? You would give me even more, right? You see, the value of an object is simply what someone is willing to pay for it. The value is simply what someone is willing to pay for it. That being true, that must mean that you are very valuable. You see, Jesus, he, he paid the ultimate price. You are worth the price of Christ's blood on the cross. The sacrifice paying for your sin and my sin that if we confess Jesus as Lord, we can be made right with him. There has been a big price paid for you. You have value. You have value when you are quarantined at home. You have value when you are out at school, when you are out enjoying the weather of summer. You have value. No matter what your past, no matter what your future, God has given you a value. And he sent his son to pay the price for it. And you don't have to have sight to be seen by him. Because when you are seen by God, nothing will ever be the same. Everything changes. So tonight, wherever you're at, if you would just bow your head and close your eyes, I know this is different. I know this might be confusing or, or uncomfortable, but if you just close your eyes, and I want you just to think about this question. If tonight, if you want to respond to Jesus, if you want to accept Jesus as Lord of your life, saying, Jesus, I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. I want to move forward. I want to seize this moment, and I want to live my life for you. If that's you, wherever you're at, and you want to respond accepting Jesus, would you just raise your hand saying, God, that's me? Would you just say out loud, God, that's me? God, I give you my life. Wherever you're at, and, and just making that decision, saying, God, I, I'm making that decision. The other group is this. If, if tonight, if you want to make the decision that I'm going to seize every moment that God gives me. I'm not going to miss an opportunity when Jesus is in the room to have an encounter with him. I'm not going to miss an opportunity where someone needs me to, to reach out, where someone needs a blessing. I'm going to seize every moment that comes, and I'm going, to, I'm going to see what Jesus does with that. If that's you, would you just raise your hand in your room? Would you just say to God right now, God, that's me. I'm going to seize the moment. Jesus, I thank you for every person listening right now. God, I thank you that that you are not just a God that shows up when we're at church, but you can show up wherever we are at, God, and that, that you have something for us, that, that you have more for us than what we're experiencing right now. God, I pray, just like Bartimaeus in the story, God, that we would seize the moment, that we wouldn't just go with what culture says, that we wouldn't be quiet when people tell us to be quiet, but we would shout it out, that we would run after you with everything we have, that we would share the love that, that you give with other people so that they could come to know you, God. God, I pray for, for those who are struggling right now of just feeling alone and, and feeling spiritually dry. That I pray that you would fill them up right now, that you would send people their way to, to comfort them, to be with them, God, and that we would grow closer to you. In your name we pray, amen. 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 If you responded tonight, we want to say that that's the best decision that you could ever make. And there's a party going on in heaven for you, but we want to give you steps for what's next in your walk with God. So if you would just text HOPE, H-O-P-E, to 515-800-2014, we want to celebrate with you. We want to give you uh, what you need next in your, in your relationship with Jesus, and we want to just love on you a little bit. We love you guys. Make sure you hop on and you join a small group on Zoom, and we'll see you guys next week.